This is the uh, pocket that's got me fired up. This is one that I made in the last class. Um, I just love it. I really, really, really love it. It's got my wadding in. Um, you know, like the stuff for stuffing things. Um, and I want to make another one. So I'm going to piece some stuff together today. But this was made with vintage Brodery Anglaise. Almost exclusively. There's a couple of new pieces somewhere. One there. Um, <coughs> and a little bit there. But I want to... That's all vintage. I want to make this one with all new, basically because I don't have a lot of vintage white work or Broderie Anglaise, to be honest. Um, not in any kind of massive amounts to do this. So I'm, I'm just going to piece a couple of pieces together. I can't piece the whole thing on camera with you, because that would mean like an hour's video. And plus I quite like to stitch them first before I piece them. But for this one I'm going to make now, I'm going to start... The, the very core of it, the very beginning of it, by piecing maybe three or four pieces together. Um, none of these are uniform. They're all different sizes, different widths, different lengths, uh, which is how I want to approach the next one. So that's what I'm going to look at now. Um, and I'm going to try and do it within like seven minutes, which might be pushing it a bit. Just let me... All right. Hopefully you'll still get a vision. So this is some new stuff. This is the most expensive stuff I've got in terms of Broderie Anglaise. This is something that was gifted to me. I got lovely gifts in the post. And this is more that was gifted to me. So first of all, I need to press some to cut some out. Literally just random size. Um, random sized rectangles uh, is what's going to happen here so this is a new iron if you've done my class any of them well since i got this you'll know that it's not my favorite ever iron won't be buying another one um, so if i cut hopefully a straight line here it won't go straight to me it's not too bad i've cut worse and then, <coughs> like I say, no plan, no measuring, just cut. So that's that. So if I fold that bit up now, this has got a lovely edge on it that I'm going to preserve and use somehow on another, <coughs> either within this piece or on another piece. I'm just folding it up because I'm trying to keep a tidy house. Although I'm fighting a losing battle and all that. So that's a piece of that. This is wonderful. I don't have a lot of this, but I'm so grateful to get it in the mail. Um, lovely fabric. Now then, I'm going to compare, because I don't have a lot of that, so I may... I might cut up there. The, the edge to the right of where I'm cutting is anything but straight. But I might be able to sort that out by turning it. Oh, it needs to be straightened a bit though. Even if just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that like that. It's a bit like piecing a wrapping cloth if you ever did the wrapping cloth class. Put that bit there. And pin that. So what will happen is after I've pinned it, I'll tack it or baste it, and then I will begin to embellish there. So I'll fold this up as well because we like to keep a tidy house. I think I'm in of the mindset. If I say that often enough happen as if by magic I wish and here's another one that was gifted to me so I'll just have a quick look at that before I decide how much of this one to cut out every time the mailman comes I think he's like the postman was like this woman gets a lot of parcels you might think I'm an obsessive internet shopper I might do it so it goes along there so, not quite wide enough. 
that's a, a salvage there that's not really usable in this kind of context. But this is going to be too wide, so I'm going to make it narrower. Press it first, then it'll be easier to get straight on it. It's good when you've got patterning on like this because it helps guide your cut off straight line if you're absolutely useless at straight lines like I am. It's a godsend having like a, a linear pattern. Um, right, so, and again, fold that over, press that down. Oh, did I press that one down? I can't remember. There's no particular reason why I would or I wouldn't, to be honest. It's just whatever comes into my head. What can I say? This is going to get so much damp stretching before it's finished. That it won't make, I don't think it matters overall whether you press it first or not, to be honest, when you think about what's going to happen to it between now and it being finished. So I think that that is sufficient now to be going on with. I don't want to get too carried away because I am liable to change my mind sometimes. Um, so that's how it was set, but that wouldn't be top and bottom. I'm thinking that's going to be sideways and what's going to happen is it'll extend up this way a bit and perhaps down that way a bit. So when it's a bag, it'll fold that way. Are you with me? So that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking there. So they're just three pieces of Brodery Anglaise pinned together, ready to uh, get some treatment with needle and thread. Okay.